In this session, we will discuss more about approval as an auth method provided by Vault. So, as we discussed in the last session, we have multiple authentication methods like cloud provider, cloud native, traditional ways are there like LDAP, AD, and Vault native methods are there like token, user pass, and approval. So, in the last session, we have already explored and uh, tried how token works, how user pass works, and uh, how approval works as an authentication method. So the types, main two categories for auth methods are for users and for applications. So as long as user is concerned, generally user pass, LDAP, AD is generally what we use. And as long as application is there, we tend to use token or approval. Now these are the CLI commands you generally use as long as uh, auth method is there. So how you first enable it then you can tune it disable it or something like this so the main focus for today's session is approval pool authentication so mainly these five steps are required okay whenever we are dealing with it we first enable that auth method called approval and then uh, we create a rule if policies are there we associate with that role and then with that role we fetch the role id and secret id and then once we have that role id and secret id is there so with the help of those two we do login and as soon as we do the login we get the token and with the help of that token then we retrieve the password or something like that so in this session we will see the same steps and these are the key takeaways okay you can go through the slide so i am using a vault in dev mode and i have initialized my vault using these steps as you know i already explained how to initialize in the previous video so if i so if i go and do vault status i can see the sealed is false and if i try the same from ui so root okay i can see i'm able to log in and it's completely blank nothing is there so i'm first doing the vault auth list and vault secrets list just to show you what things are there by, by default so vault auth list is only token and vault secret list showed me the secret now let's follow these steps so first enable the app rule okay approval is enabled and if i do secret list authentication list again so you can see approval has been enabled now let's create a role with a policy so for this today's session uh, we are we are trying to fetch a db user okay you can see here in the end we are trying to retrieve a specific db secret so let's first create a secret in kv as secret is already enabled so let's create this secret and try to fetch it. Okay, the secret has been created. Now let's try to fetch it. Done. I can see my DB name is this, password is this, and like that. So if I who I am right now, so vault token lookup. This will give me that who am I right now. So I am right now as a root so let's create a policy so first let's check what all policies if i have created any nope i haven't created any these are the only two policies we have now let's create one <coughs> so i'm creating a policy here over that path okay the one we have used mysql web app mysql web app and i'm giving only read permissions so here i'm creating a policy okay policy got created let's try to read it yep so policy is successfully created now let's create a role so you can see policy has been created okay now now let's create a role and assign that policy to it so approval is already enabled now here i am creating a role and the role name will be jenkins role ttl will be 60 minutes and 
I am assigning this policy. So let's create a role. Done. The role creation has been done, and this is how we read the role. <coughs> so you can see here, guys. These are the field which I didn't keep any value. So like, like you know, here I have used only token TTL, but you can use a secret ID TTL. You know, a token token number of uses or secret ID number of uses. So moving on. So whenever when I come to this section, okay, the third real life and the second real life and how to protect it. So I'll I'll give you a brief explanation about these fields. Okay, we will see real life how these matters and how can we protect uh, our secret ID. Okay, now the role has been created. Now we are done with this step two. Our role has been created. Now let's fetch the role id and secret id using that role so this is how we can retrieve the role id role id is there and let's fetch the secret id and this is how we can fetch the secret id <coughs> yep so this is my secret id now have attention guys this is a read the reason being it will always remain same okay even if i do even if i do role id multiple times if i try to fetch a role id multiple times it will always remain same but if i try to retrieve my secret id okay so you can see it always changes okay and you can see here i didn't keep any with respect to secret i didn't keep any ttl i didn't keep any number of uses so that's why i can use it as number of times but if i use like you know secret number of uses as five so i can only use five attempts for that so we will see this scenario in the next time next time so now let me try to log in so this is my role id and this is my secret id and here i'm doing the login okay authentication approval and login i got my token now so if i see here login with role id and secret id now i got my token now let's retrieve the password so now let's copy this keep it here my new token now who i am so to, this will give me who i am right now so i am right now this guy i logged in as april and my policy map is jenkins policy and ttl is set to one hour so whatever i can do within one hour this is the token i can go for, go with so so this is the one way or another way if you are doing it via api so just put your token here parole id here secret id here and just give her just execute this it will give you the same thing so let's try to fetch it then we are able to retrieve all the values yeah good but as 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 if you remember we have given only the read access okay so if we try to delete that password or that kv secret so it should give permission denied issue yeah as expected and even if you try to uh, create some it should give you the permission access perfect so things work work as expected so let's switch back to root so talking about the importance so assume we have application a wants to do communication with application b so it will always need to the authentication first so here we are using the app role authentication okay and whenever this role id is there it will always remain same so i don't need to you know think much of it because it is just like a username i can easily share with but what i am concerned with is a password so my secret id is just like a password and it generates a value every time we need it so we must protect it so how to protect the secret id so one thing is we can limit my secret id uses here you can see 
uh, I can set my secret ID number of uses uh, or TTL or token period or something you know which I can do it or second is uh, my wrapping okay wrapping the secret ID so if I show you like this so let's try to fetch a role okay so this is my role now let's try to fetch the secret ID so here it gave me the um, secret ID and this is the wrapping token now you can see this is not like a previous secret ID here instead of secret ID it has given me a wrapping token now if I want to do the unwrap so I can use this now you can see it has given me the secret ID and now I can use that one. but but what what's the advantage you know we are getting using this wrap and unwrap so first layer is we are encrypting it's kind of encryption okay have a look here wrap TTL so assume assume you know I'm doing giving it for 10 seconds so let's uh, fetch it again okay the countdown has been started now I have my wrapping token but let's say I have given it to some X application okay to retrieve it and uh, within that time frame if this wrapping token is not getting used so it should expire okay so let's copy this and here and 10 seconds must have gone now so if I do this so it should give me yep wrapping token is not valid so this is how you know I can limit so if I am sharing my secret ID with someone in the form of masking so I should be knowing you know in how much second it should do the execution so so even if I share it and I, I know that within hour or within five minutes it is going to consume so I can share this um, wrapping token and then even if it gets leaked so doesn't matter we don't get any clue based on this wrapping token and then whosoever is concerned can be able to do it within that time frame so yeah it's one, one of the good way to uh, secure my secret id now the first use case is we saw via policy control okay here uh, we have used as a jenkins policy <clears throat> now let's try the second way in the automated way mm, instead of db let's create one uh, jenkins user this time in kb okay kb user J jenkins user has been created now let's create one policy i'm giving it as a jenkins new policy i'll be giving a read and list permission okay policy has been created now <clears throat> let's make use of this policy number of uses and token TTL so I'll explain you so now I'm creating this role okay so not only number of views I can put my CID also as well so as long as I'm using whosoever is consuming this role if it falls under this range will be only allowed and with we can do the same with token okay so here I'm making it specific to my machine. So if I'm trying to do the same with another machine, it should fail. So let's create this role. Okay, role has been created. Now let's try to read it and see what values it has. Okay, so it is now says secret ID number of users permitted is three, token number of users is five. So let's see. So if I do as you, as you can see secret ID TTL I set it to 30 seconds to 30 seconds so this is a time frame this is how you know a bash script or some you know uh, should work so here I don't need to copy my role ID or paste it there is no manual manual intervention here so I'm just keeping my secret ID and role ID here now my secret ID and role ID are in the form of environment variables now if I try to get it so here I'm setting my wall token using the new local ID 
token ID and here I'm doing the wall token. So wall token lookup. Now who I am? So I'm here uh, as logged in as a app role and with this policy. So you remember here we kept my token number of visits is five. Okay. So I have already used once. This is my third attempt, fourth attempt, fifth attempt sixth attempt done if i try to do it again it shows me permission denied because the number of views has been exhausted so this is one of the you know uh, case i know if i know that you know i i, I will use only uh, it five number of times or three number of times so i can make use of it let's do uh, let's using this policy let's do the secret id again so as the previous token is exhausted so i'm logging again with the root and now let's make use of this how how can we restrict the secret id uses to three so here i'll first retrieve my role id and the secret id Okay, so my role ID is this, secret ID is this. Now I'll try to use my secret ID more than three times. Let's see what happens. So this is first time. Okay, it gives me token. Now using I'm using here the same secret ID, but for the second time. Okay, it gave me token, but now I'm doing it for the third time. Now you can see all my three attempts are done. So if I try to use the same again, it should throw me that my secret ID is invalid. And this is as expected because I have kept it my secret ID number of users as three. So yeah, this is this is a way, uh, another way. Now let's try the third scenario where um, we will control role rather than a policy okay so let's create a policy here with the name orchestrator and, uh, okay policy has been created let's create a token based on that policy have a look here guys okay it is a role control it is no more a secret it is a role control i'm creating a token i got the token now let me copy this let me paste it here and if I try to read this, write this role, okay, to retrieve my secret ID, so it should work. Yep. But if I try to read the role, because here you can see I'm, I am allowed only to get my secret ID, not my role ID. So if I try to read my role ID, it should throw me error permission denied. yeah as expected now you must have got good idea now why we should protect secret id and how to how can we protect it so that's pretty much guys for this session in the next uh, we will discuss about uh, pki secret engine we will be creating our own ca we will create a root certificate we will create intermediate certificate and a leaf certificate and uh, here i have this uh, demo python demo application running where right now you can see it is uh, not secure so we will create a certificate and try to use this certificate and uh, let's see if this works or not thanks for watching my video please like comment and subscribe this will help me to work on myself